I was introduced as a nano-economist, but I guess most of you don't know what nano-economics is. Actually, I think all of you don't know what nano-economics is, because even the members of my family who are here today still don't get it. So I'm pretty lonely for the moment. But imagine how much more difficult it is to explain that to a 10-year-old. I have this friend's kid who one day asked me, looking down on me, though he's that big, like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, it's a pretty interesting exercise, because when you try to simplify things, you get all that useless junk out. So I ended up with this. I examine the internet to understand what we feel and think in order to give the leaders of this wor world some advice about what is best to do. And he seemed satisfied. He looks at me, not bad. You will work for me. You will work for me? It's already pretty patronizing when someone tells you you will work for me one day. But when a kid tells you that, smack him in horn, will you? <laughs> but I cool down, I keep my cool. And I just ask him, why? And all. What will you do one day? And he tells me he'll be the president of the world. And I take him seriously, because I take children seriously, seriously. And I go back home, and I'm really starting to think about this. I mean, what advice will I give to the president of the world? What should I tell him? And when I go back to him the next time we see each other, I actually have a case study and a story. And here's the story I told him. United States, Kansas, 2005. The Committee of Education, the board that is responsible for what kids learn at school, one day decided that the theory of intelligent design, meaning God created the world, would, be at, would have the same amount of hours in classrooms than the theory of evolution, which Darwin came up with, and on which scientists mostly agree. Of course, this made some people pretty happy, <laughs> but made other people a bit upset. Bobby Henderson is a physics graduate, uh, uh, graduate, and he found the decision completely scandalous. So he wrote a letter to the Committee of Education saying, great, intelligent design is great, only I am concerned about which god you will teach children created the world. Because you might think your god created the world, but me and my community, we think a flying spaghetti monster created the world. <laughs> yeah. And he actually drew, at the end of the letter, a flying spaghetti monster with two meatballs and the spaghetti. A flying spaghetti monster. But that's the beginning of the story. I mean, it's just a nutcase. He can, think, he can believe in whatever he wants. 2006 to 2010 was what made it a big phenomenon. Because that is the period where a play was created about the sp flying spaghetti monster, where a game was developed about the flying spaghetti monster, and where blo when blogs started talking about it, it became a buzz. But that's nothing. 2011 was the year where you could see people disguising as the monster. You could see people walking in the streets, manifesting, demonstrating their faith, sculptures of the spaghetti monsters, crop circles of the flying spaghetti monster, <laughs> a Bible of the flying spaghetti monster, the Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. 2011 was the year when a simple drawing became a god. 2011 was the year where the community of the Flying Spaghetti Monster became the church of the FSM, Flying Spaghetti Monsters. Right? But that's not the story, Mr. President. What I want you to understand, he's pretty small, what I want you to understand is that we don't care if some people follow a bowl of noodle or not. What we really care about is how do you go from 2005 to 2011? How do you turn a simple drawing into an actual god? And the thing is, 2005 had something special. Bobby Henderson simply wrote a letter he did a drawing, but he was no leader. He told no one, follow me, believe in a new monster, I have a new god. It's not the case. This movement started with no leader. The next time you're in traffic, think, think of Halim Madi. You're sitting there. But the thing is, 
there's this one moment where one guy starts honking, and you're like, yeah, thank God, or thank Flying Spaghetti Monster, right? And everybody starts honking, and it becomes a movement, a real movement. But this first guy who honked is no leader. He didn't tell you to honk. He simply put out there something everybody had inside. He put out there a common purpose, and that is what starts movements, a common purpose. But purpose is useless alone. What you really need, and that's why 2006, 2010 was so important, is actually interaction. What the blogs did is that they created discussion about, around the spaghetti monster. It's very similar to bacteria. Bacteria, sure. Shut up, sit more kid. I'm explaining to you, right? And bacteria have this thing. So remember the last time you were sick? It took like two days, three days to actually realize you were sick, five days to actually become sick. That's because bacteria have a strategy. They go into your body, but they don't start attacking, they simply multiply. They grow, they send signals, and once this signal crosses a threshold, that's when they understand that they should attack. And we're similar to bacteria in, our, in the way we operate. I'm not telling you you are bacterias. You are natural emitters, transmitters. You receive and emit signals. You receive and emit information. It's the story of our species. What you do, the last time you went to, the, to downtown, taking a flag of the, um, taking a Lebanese flag and, start to, and waving it, what happened isn't that you got the news and simply decided, I, I have to go, I have to do something. You waited for your neighbor, your friend, to change his mind. You waited for all your surroundings to actually tell you, let's do something. And when that signal crossed the threshold, that's when you said to yourself, yourself, I should take the car, I should do something. People, emitters, transmitters, are what turn a simple movement into a community. But that's useless too. What can I do with people in the street? Nothing. What you need, and what's the key behind that, what ha really happened in 2011, is a secret ingredient. It's the thing that takes you from chaos to order. A simple bowl of spaghetti to an actual monster, right? And I want you to think of Al-Qaeda now, to illustrate that example. It's not a happy thought. Well, you all know this guy died some time ago. But if you think that the death of bin Laden put an end to what Al-Qaeda is doing, you're completely wrong. The franchises they have in Yemen, Iraq, Somalia are deadlier than ever, or at least as deadly as before bin Laden died. And the thing, the reason is simple. They have a purpose. They have the people interacting with each other. But what makes that community into a truly efficient organization is the fact that they have principles. Did you know that each new member of Al-Qaeda has handed a book with 39 principles in it, going from don't employ foreigners because they could be spies, to try to start the jihad around you with the people you know? Principles, my friends, is what turns a community into an organization. But this is just a study case, as I said. This is just one example. It's a flying spaghetti monster. It's a part of something way bigger the whole web. This has been happening all around you. Do you remember the first eras of the web? Web 1.0, they call it. It's very similar to what happened in 2005. You were reading articles. Remember when you had the diskette and you put it and you, and you do the expose on, the, on your computer? At that time, the compu the, we were consuming the web. We were receiving that inspiration. It gave us some kind of a common purpose. Web 2.0, when you started using Facebook and Twitter, was a complete revolution. Interacting created communities around you. You are part of groups now. In other terms, Web 1.0 and Web 2.0 turned us into emitters, transmitters. They gave us people and purpose. But now you know what is lacking. Now you know where I'm getting at. Principles are what will build the next phase of the Internet. I'm not the guy who's going to tell you the internet is changing the world. It is a complete revolution. The internet is a tool. It is a tool. But I am the guy who's going to remind you that some tools have changed the destiny of our species. Fire has made us into who we are. 
language it was, is what our civilizations are built upon. Everybody is thinking, what will Web 3.0 be, be like? If you look at the FSM example, the flying spaghetti monster, it's clear that the next stage is the stage where communities on the web will start organizing. Organization is where we're going. And it's not happening only in religion, like with the, with the FSM. It's happening all around you. Who's a couch surfer here? Thank you. Couch surfing started on the web, moved to reality. Who knows? Um, the Swedish par uh, Pirate Party is a, is, a par is a party that started on the web, then moved to reality. Kiva, a bank on the web that is affecting reality. Bitcoins, an internet currency that does not exist in reality, only in the web. Who here trusts the web more than their doctor? We are many, my friends. <laughs> Who here have healed their last illness by using the internet rather than that and that is in the services of their doctor. People, you are Web 3.0. You are using the services of a self-organized community. You are that community. And where we're heading is not a, a word where there, where, where there is web and reality. No. Web and reality are two aspects of the same world. They are the two balls of a single new monster. In other words, there is no Web 3.0. There's the word 3.0 coming. And if I had to give a piece of advice to this president of the world, if I don't kick him before, well, it would be that the world you would like to rule is going to be completely different from what you expect. It is a world you cannot predict. It's Nietzsche who said, right, that God is dead nearly a century ago. Today, CEOs, presidents out there in here, Better be careful, because in a world where spaghetti monsters replace gods, who knows who will replace them? Thank you.